Looser, looser orb. Now you have a third one. Yeah, and the cooldown is very, very closely matched with the looser orb and waiting rifts. So, pretty much you get a second round of Witchblade with the other two spells coming up. Moxie is going to be saved by Taiga. Gets off the Rolling Thunder inside of the coil again. Two down. Chad gets brought in by Celery, but Celery is just gone. And Freezing Field quickly blows him up. And Chad asks, "Why? Oh, why?" Are we taking that fight there? Liquid, they seemed well prepared and well set up. And stuff that may build this item, but in general, how does it feel to play this patch as the guy that doesn't build Orb of Corrosion? I feel like that item is so broken. I would uh, kind of tend to agree with that, yeah. I think the, the nerf was uh, a little well placed. Oh, the roll-in almost caught Chad before he jumped out, but Chad was able to get away in time. Quickly kills Insane. Now with the shackles on the boxy, they're going to be able to bring him down. Toby is looking for more, 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 and he's going to find it too. Koifa managed to get the fear off on some of the heroes, but uh, with his tanky true form, Toby gives up on that kill. Chad's going to try and protect everybody with this Wukong's command, but Liquid, they're just going to wait on the outside of it. Mickey preventing them from being able to head back to the base. Taiga rolling in, but maybe a little bit too soon. No, oh, perfect for Mickey though, to come in and clean up all these kills, even if it costs Taiga his life. And Taiga was and probably sitting there going, no carry is going to be patient enough to watch two creep waves die and not try and farm. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a tough one, man. You, there's, it's just gold sitting right in front of you, man. Yeah, I know you as a carry player, there's no way you would be that patient. Erebus, er no! <laughs> oh, no. That was like the bad ending of Indiana Jones. He just got rolled over by that big boulder. He goes down without liquid committing in the slightest. They've just been letting the bear take the buildings this entire time. And Viking GG not able to get defense and when you can't fight him and you're against a lone druid you just kind of just end up watching the lone druid kill your base i think this is an important thing to learn when you guys are thinking about going high ground is i feel like a lot of times when i'm playing this push hero like lone druid your team kind of like griefs you a bit because they want to like initiate onto the opponent and i'm like dude they have to go on us man like, mm. let them go on us. And in this case, you see there, like, they don't want to go on the Lone Druid. So what ends up happening is Liquid's patiently waiting behind him, and the Radiant's base just dies. Yeah, you play this whole hunting phase until you have the items you need to go high ground, and it looks like they assess that to be the, the Assault Cure Ass for Koifa, because that just accelerates how quickly they take these towers by such a large degree that, yeah, in the time that they're taking your racks and you're trying to get a trade, you know, you're picking up two bounty routes. It's like, okay, that's, n that's not all that great. And now they're just going to collapse the map. They TP their support to top their least useful hero for the team fight, while the rest of them control the triangle. And this is going to easily set up for that tier two push top, and then that final lane of barracks or the Roche. Shadow Shaman or Disruptor when you're leaving? Uh, I'm gonna say Shadow Shaman, because at least Disruptor, you can just drop your ultimate and have a dis. Uh... Meanwhile, Aramis, in order to get a disable, I guess Hex is out there, but there's no chance you're getting shackles. As you can see, Koifa's gonna run up to him with the bear, and now he stands. Chat, he's gonna come in with DKD, gets off the Wukong's command, and see if they can fight here for once with the bear stuck inside the serpents. It will die. Koifa says, don't worry, I've got another one where that came from. Boxy, he gets a little bit low. Shad doesn't want to go outside of his ring. His ring is gone now, and so too is the armor. So Koifa quickly takes him down in just a couple of chomps of the bear. That is truly it for Viking GG. Don't worry Oracle, about uh, it's weird. I feel like Oracle's really good against Flardar if, her, if his carry offers a lot of damage in the lane, like a troll or something like that. Uh, Ricky is pretty lackluster for damage at this stage in the game, so even though you can purge a sprint You can kind of hold on to it for when he wants to as you saw he waited until after celery used the dispel on himself and end up chasing him down I feel like this is a really nice lane for Slardar as we also see Enigma biting the dust top 
and a one for one trade. Quakefa's even happier now because his support died before the opponent died. And he got he the root, the so he might get the kill snake. as well. He does. Oh Double my kill. god. That was great. They tried to punish uh, Taiga for moving forward and using his Eidolons to, to kill one of the boars. And uh, instead, Koifa walks away with double kill. Looks like Boxy he does, might uh, be rushing a blink, maybe. He's got 1,500 gold saved up. Hasn't queued anything up just yet, though. Koifa Z getting going. Coming in, Beastmaster. Takes a while to be able to get into that outpost, but he finally arrives and does manage to kill the Crystal Maiden with a Primal Roar. Does mean they have nothing left in the tank to be able to kill Koifa, and if anything, Koifa could be killing Aramis here with Boxy coming into the other side. Seller is going to make sure he's not going to die so easily, though. Gets off his ultimate, heals him up a little bit, but now it's Seller who's going to be in trouble as the bear finally does get the ensnare needs. Defend that lane. Instead, they can be like, okay, Viking GG doesn't have any abilities. Let's just walk into row. Yeah. So it may have looked like a kill that went in favor of Viking GG, but Liquid is actually going to turn it back on them and say, hey, we're now going to take the objective we were near just because you used all your stuff to kill our guy before. He's back a lot. Yeah, Requiem is their only, like, big team fight AoE ability. Everything else they have is real single targets, so this fight around the pit, it's going to be a bit dicey, especially with Mickey coming in. Getting managed to get the two-man coil with the freezing field next to it, but he actually dies. He tries to get out of the smoke screen. A shuriken cuts him down. That was not the worst thing for Viking GG, but it still doesn't win them this Roshan fight as they are still trying to stall out the buyback from Celery, so he's still going to be able to rejoin them here. And he has his ultimate as well. Boom's just going to try and throw some damage in the pit, scare them away. He cannot afford to let Liquid get this Aegis. Yeah, this is the fight me, Roshan. They actually are doing this in order to force a reaction from Viking. They do have the Blink Dagger on Taiga as well. That is a super farmed Enigma, actually more farmed than his offlaner, something we actually mentioned in the first game, where sometimes they kind of just demote Boxy purely based on Taiga's hero pool. Enigma, one of the best supports in the game, if not the best, to get these early items up on. And uh, they smoke again on Liquid. Smoke is going to be broken immediately. Aramis positioning himself, knowing that the enemy team very likely He's going to try and force something here. Aramis gets a little bit low from Boxy, but he's going to be saved by the Oracle. Oh, no. Boom. He popped his BKB there, and he's going to go for the Requiem just to be able to kill Insania. But similar to that kill earlier, they've now used their big team fight ability. Just get one small pick off. Boom's going to have to break this coil and keep on running up to the triangle. He's going to turn around, throw some damage out there, see if they can kill the bear. Toby gets a little bit low, but is saved by Celery. He should heal up a decent amount here. The Koifa Bear is going to die to the Necronomicon. He's got another one, though. Toby, he doesn't heal much at all. In fact, he immediately gets bursted down by Boxy, who now blinks forward and looking for a little bit more. Boom! With the Corrosive Haze on him, Mickey is pumping out the damage with that Witch's Blade, plus Treads and two double Null Tally. That is a right-click build. He will manage to kill the SF, but Shad's going to die. But a Black Hole with the Freezing Field, in turn, is going to wipe the, re the last remaining member of Viking GG and Liquid have finally secured themselves that Roshan. Uh, will it surmount to like any long-term effects? We'll just have to see as a fight breaks out mid and Bounty Hunter dying immediately, I do not think is how we envision them capitalizing. Yeah, Liquid just played on the high ground with a sentry laid out and waited for the Bounty Hunter to try and scout some heroes out. They immediately get that kill and playing around the high ground means they can afford to take a four versus four. Here is Shad is stuck inside the freezing field. He's not going to be making it out anytime soon with Taiga just throwing his full weight into Boom. He pops the blink BKB black hole. Make sure that the other core is going to fall as well. Quickly, just like that, four heroes take on five and it's the five that fall. Viking GG team wiped 15,000 net worth lead for Liquid as they push for the high ground. GG, that's it. Wow. Yeah, I don't really blame them here. I feel like they, they, they actually just know exactly what's going to happen because it happened to them in real time like 40 minutes ago, you know?